It's easy to have daddy issues when your daddy is dark side. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse The Dark Side War Calabac. Brutal and pitiless, Calabac is the eldest son of Darkseid, Lord of Apocalypse. He is a devoted to the sire and relentless foe of Orion, the son Darkseid allowed to be raised on New Genesis. When Darkseid was incapacitated, Calabac took command, readying the Chaos Cannon powered by the Chaos Sword in the body of Batman's son Damien to destroy the inhabited planets and channel their energies back to Apocalypse. Apparently, they make them big in Apocalypse. Before we get a closer look, though, at Calabac, let's grab first the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. And if you don't mind me saying this, also while I'm measuring this guy off, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new Dark Side War Calabac that we could have a look at this review, taking it much further than many of the DC Multiverse figures we've looked at in the past. Calabac stands impressively at nine inches in height, or the figure is 23 centimeters tall. As of right now, though, we don't have a comic version of his dad, but we do have one at least that we got from the Justice League movie. So here's what Calabac looks like with the Snyder Cut release, Darkseid. Darkseid is taller than Calabac, but Calabac is a lot bigger, though. Here's also what the figure looks like with the recently looked at Mongol. Uh, Mongol is also another big figure. Mongol actually is bigger than Darkseid, and he is going to be bigger in this case than in Calabac. And a figure, though, that I thought was perfectly scaled, if you guys all also happen to have this figure as part of your collection, here's what the figure also looks like with King Shark. Now, King Shark was a huge figure from the Suicide Squad movie. And just when you put him next to Calabac, they're about the same size. Calabac, though, is just a tad bit taller, though. Even though a lot of plastic went into building Calabac, the figure still manages to pull off getting a display stand, a weapon that he can wield, and of course the trading card, which didn't really involve plastic. The trading card in this case does have more of a silhouetted look of Calabac, so you don't get the chance to see as many of his finer features. This is actually pulled in this case from the Dark Side War, but if you are just looking for a classic looking Calabac, this one fits the bill pro properly. I think if anything, he's probably just a little bit too big, but he's pretty much big this size when it comes to the Dark Side War. Flip around the back of the card, though, the real name in this case, if you would believe it, is still Calabac. And there's a good meaty paragraph read you can read for yourself if you so wish. Once again, I like the idea that they are using, uh, f not figure photography in this case, but actually source material. We're going to put that to the side. I don't know why I was waving my fingers like that. Figure also comes included with the display stand. Still the same stand as we always get. It's a smaller stand, which actually fits fine for the normal footprint of a general sized figure. But when you get a big guy like this, really his footprint literally takes up the entire footprint space of the display stand. You only get a little bit of it sneaking out the sides. The display stand though, to its credit, does help to stabilize the figure. Though it may look right now like he's standing fine. He actually stands fine in, if you have him like this. If you put him in any off-keltered stance, then it sort of does off-kelter the figure. And I would certainly say for that sake, use the display stand. It's included after all. Figure also comes included with his weapon. Now his weapon, depending on how you'd like him to wield it, can either be displayed this way, which I think most of the time the figure is displayed online with his with the images of the figure where this is the longest piece is sticking up. I actually kind of like to display it this way, so it kind of looks like sort of a cross between brass knuckles and an axe. This does fit into his hands, and again, with his hands being the, that they are designed the way that they are, you only have really hand one hand to work with. This hand is a closed fist, so obviously it's not going to fit in that hand. Uh, one thing I would have to say also about the weapon is I'm glad to see that they actually made this out of a more softer plastic because you're going to have a real hard time to actually fit this in his hand right now. I would certainly also suggest heating the hand in, in hot water. You can also use a hair dryer as well. You don't always have to bring in water to the mix. But this does fit into his hand, although very awkwardly. Uh, prying the fingers as best as I can away like the plastic is really rigid and really dense. Because again, like this is a softer plastic, it certainly does help to fit this better into his hand, just because again, like the weapon is a softer plastic. I may again want to heat this up again if I wanted to have this displayed, but yeah, it does fit. Though a little more struggling was required on my part, he does actually have the means to hold his weapon. And again, you can either have it where it's facing up this way, or again, like I had at the beginning of the review, you can have it flipping down the other way. It's entirely up to you. 
hardest thing of part actually the hardest part about this is just trying to remove it then again from his hand because again his grip is pretty close together and luckily again this is softer plastic thank goodness it's softer plastic getting though a closer look now at Calabac overlooking the sheer size of this guy man is the head sculpt fantastic on him and really all the rest of the body also as well and even though again like this is supposed to be from the dark side war it fits fine for a classical in Calabac also as well the tunic that he is wearing, of course, does have very familiar colors of the darker green. He's got the lighter green also there with the symbol that he has on the front of his chest. He does have himself a bandolier there, a, a strap that he has on the front that does match the gold that he has rather nicely here in the belt also as well. But I can't get too far down the suit. I obviously want to spend a lot of time talking about his face. I think also in the Justice League, Mar in the Justice League cartoon... Calabac, I believe, was voiced by Michael Dorn. You can let me know if that's correct down below in the comment section. But what a fine-looking head sculpt that this is. He's got a big sneer, though, on his face with two bottom long teeth sticking out the tops of his lip. I like the use of they added the additional yellow there in his eyes, darker shadowing around the eyes so that those, those eyes do pop. Now, I've noticed here on, on the face of mine, at least, I don't know if you can actually notice it right now. I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not. It certainly seems like there's a much lighter coloring of yellow that they kind of added in between his brow line there. I don't know if it's just a continuation of the crown, the crest that he has, on, the headdress that he has on the front of his face, but there is just a little bit of off yellow that's on the front of his face. I do notice it, though, a little bit more. Uh, obviously, the moment I took this guy to the packaging, I did notice they seemed to have a little bit of an off color right there, but maybe, again, it's that it's supposed to be there. Long ears, though, you can see there on the back, slightly masked a little bit by the softer hair. I was actually kind of surprised to see that they used softer hair on this guy. Uh, the top of the head, again, it seems to have more of a rubbery kind of plastic that they would have used. Uh, again, I don't know why they would have not used a harder plastic. Maybe it may have something to do with the fact that he has all these little curls in the back of his hair. If this was made of more of a brittle plastic or a harder plastic, maybe there could be the risk of this potentially breaking. Maybe it's also just a little cheaper also for them to use this slightly softer plastic. But rotating this all the way around, you can see just how much how much locks they've actually managed to sculpt in there. It doesn't look like there's any, any additional color other than just the darker brown that they've used but man oh man what a fine looking head sculpt that is now we can have a look at again the rest of the figure's body now he is sleeveless although one side of the figure's body you can see he's got this very large shoulder pad that is going to come into play a little bit more on the limitations of the figure when it comes to the posability at least on this side this side isn't so much of an issue at all you can easily rotate his arm all the way around you can also hinge it out but this is kind of where the arm is going to be a little bit more on the more limited side just because you got the softer plastic shoulder pad here attached on the one side of his bandolier Again, like the coloring on this guy is really, really good. There really isn't a lot of paint happening here for the arms, but I really don't think he necessarily needs a whole lot of paint anyways. He does have paint where it counts, like the straps there of the lighter green that he's got there on his arms. Of course, the hands themselves are kind of more of a darker forest green, a little bit darker than actually the tunic that he wears. And he does also have his loincloth. If anybody was anxious about a loincloth on a figure, he does have one. It's a more of a harder plastic, though. You can see like the individual straps of fabric all sort of molded together. And this is actually attached to his belt. So when you are moving the loincloth, just to look, take a peek under the hood, it's also all attached here to his belt. Just going to spin this around so you can see that a loincloth also meets on the back of the figure's body there as well with some additional nice gold that, again, that they've used for the bandolier and the belt. Again, there really isn't a lot of paint when I'm looking at a figure like this. I see likely that they probably would have painted the sides here for that more yellowish green they would have painted here in the front. But I think a lot of it is just kind of just more the plastic more than anything else. Kind of when you're looking down below here, it looks like they probably would have painted the pant legs green and then left behind. Although really at the top here, it does kind of look like there is a little seam line where the paint would have stopped. Maybe they would have painted the legs as certainly the legs seem shinier. Maybe that was the thing that they actually painted on the figure's body. Big giant feet also down below here. He does have articulation, although he doesn't have as much rocking articulation when it comes to the ankles. So again, when you got, are posing this guy in any more of a creative pose than just having this guy standing straight, I would certainly make use of the display stands using the, the holes again provided on the moms of his feet. For the articulation of Calabac, let's go ahead and pick the figure back up again. His head sculpt is on a ball joint, so it does rotate all the way around. It creaks and squeaks while it does do that. Head does look up only by that much. The head does look down by that much. And you can also rock it back and forth as well. While the head seems more of a softer plastic, his body... Hello, seems a little bit more on the hollow side. Uh, the arms themselves are the more harder of the plastic, but his, his body, his torso especially, does seem like it's probably two halves of hollow plastic that they put together. It does make for a little bit lighter of a figure, but again, if that's the way that they have to go, the route that they have to go in order to get a figure of this size, then I'm okay the fact that the body's a little on the more hollow side. 
Now, when it comes to, again, the arms, you can rotate on this side fine and good. This is the side that you can have a little more of a harder time just because you've got, again, that shoulder pad. Show you guys the detail work on the shoulder pad itself. What a nice sculpting that they did put into that. But yeah, when it comes to this arm, you're only going to be able to move it back and forth. You rotate it all the way around, you're only going to run the risk of actually ripping off the shoulder pad, and nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. These arms still, though, this arm manages, and this arm manages to pull out a 90-degree angle bend. Uh, he doesn't have necessarily a bicep swivel, but what he does have at least is a forearm rotation, and it also hinges back and forth with only a single hinge in the elbow. Hands do rotate all the way around as well. And of course, there is also a hinge joint there in the hand that you can also allow the hand to hinge back and forth this way. Calabac's body, though, the upper torso is on a very generous ball joint. As actually, I was really surprised to see how much this guy does move when it comes to his top torso articulation. And it does move back and forth rather nicely up and down. And yeah, you could technically rotate the body all the way around as well. Legs do split out. Just be careful, though, of the side parts of his belt. Again, he's got these little loops of plastic that drape down. Like It doesn't limit necessarily, but you can feel it gets a little tight for quarters when it comes to moving these legs outward. You can take the legs and you can move them forward. You can move them back. There's a mild swivel at the top of the thigh, kind of more the way it was assembled in the factory. He does also have... Uh, he does have a swivel down below here in the lower leg, just below the knee, but the knee does have a single hinge. It's really hard to move the knees, but I would rather, much rather have harder joints to move than really overly excessively loose knees. And that's not the case at all here at Calabac. I notice his knees are very tight. The thing that's also tight here on this figure is also his uh, his feet, his ankles. His ankles are really hard to move up and down. Very stiff, but again, I would much rather that it's going to ensure that this guy's going to stay stable on my shelf. The rocking back and forth doesn't rock as well as I would hope. It does rock, but it doesn't rock in such a way that it really helps to, to stabilize the figure. If anything, when you rock it, it sort of does throw off the balancing of his feet. So I would, if anything, kind of keep the feet more straight than anything else. He does also have toe articulation, quite excessively toe articulated feet, but overall just a neat looking figure. I think if anything, I would say like, if you were to look at this figure, like more of a classic looking Calabac, he's really big. I mean, he's big to the point where like, if I was just to, again, slide this one over. And if I was say to compare him with, I only have this dark side, obviously for right now. But if you were to look at the two and you were to kind of go to his more classic roots, I think Calabac probably should have only been about this size. Now, when it comes to, of course, the dark side ward Calabac, he's a bigger looking guy overall. And his height does vary depending on which which part point in the comics you first find this guy. Sometimes in the earlier comics and even the Justice League cartoon, Calabac appeared more to be like about this height. But obviously, this one's going to be a little bit bigger than those. Nice looking figure, though. A little hollow, though, in the body. But again, I can forgive that for the fact of how much detail that they put into this figure in the first place. Calabac is a fine, fine looking figure. To go along with this extremely impressive Calabac, I do hope we get ourselves an equally impressive dark side. I'm kind of surprised, in fact, that we haven't gotten ourselves a dark side yet. Not counting, of course, the two that we did get for the Justice League movie, but just a standout classic looking dark side that can go along with Calabac. I'm sure when we do eventually get ourselves one, it won't be one that will be sold separately. I think it would be smart on their part to not release dark side as a build a figure part of an entire wave and maybe orion calabac's brother can be part of that specific wave not to get ahead of ourselves though calabac here there's a lot of plastic that went into this guy although the plastic does change depending on what parts you're looking on the figure's body hard plastic for his arms and hard plastic for his legs yet though he does have hollow plastic for his torso and more of a rubbery plastic for his head so they seem to be incorporating different mediums when it comes to the plastic that they ended up using. It certainly, though, while you all put everything together like that, makes for a very interesting, very cool-looking Calabac. The only thing about the figure, though, is while he does have hard plastic for his arms, he does have also equally hard plastic for his one hand. So it's going to have a little bit more of a harder time. You're going to have a little more of a harder time, like this person had a harder time trying to get the weapon to his hand. I would certainly suggest, if you're going to be struggling to try to get it in there, heat the hand first in hot water or a hair dryer. You can thank me for that a little bit later. But what a fine looking Calabac though. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Is this a figure you could see yourself picking up and adding to your collection? Weigh in your thoughts down below for Calabac. And once again, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Dark Side War Calabac in all of his glory that we could have a look at this review. Certainly as well, speaking of which, if you enjoyed this review, why not hit it with a like? If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly on board to see more DC Multiverse stuff, well, of course, the one thing you can do is hit that subscribe button down below. And I suppose technically there's two things you can do. You can hit that subscribe button down below and then you can also move on over and turn on the bell notification to ensure 
ensure that you're not going to be missing out on videos like this, for example. You're always going to get those notifications from YouTube on a regular basis as the person behind the camera is always uploading stuff Monday to Friday, usually two times a day. So there's always going to be new stuff coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I just realized I rhymed that. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.